blemish there. Hitting Maya Brady, putting the lead off on base, but she found herself getting out of some jams yesterday. Has that good rise ball, 43% chase on that pitch, meaning out of the zone, not in the strike zone, but mixes her pitch as well. I think the biggest thing she did a great job of against those Virginia Tech Hokie hitters last night was her arm side pitches. So a little bit of elevation with that rise ball, that backdoor curve ball, owned the lefties away and owned the inner half to those righties. Jadalyn Alchin lays down a slow rolling bunt and beats it out, two on for UCLA. UCLA got off to a very fast start the first time they played Grand Canyon on Friday night. And this is just so clutch. This is what Jade Lynn Alchin does so well. The sack bunt, you can even see Nolan, she's in, but it's perfect placement. A lot of speed up the line and some action going here for the Bruins right out of the gate. And then another dangerous hitter, Charlize Palacios, has two home runs on the weekend. She hit not one, but both of those against this Grand Canyon team Friday night. Well, an Apo Taco, I mean, she loves to be able to hit to right field. So good at seeing the ball deep in the zone. So if I am Megan Golden, I'm gonna try to own the inner half if I can. Palacios! She eats up whatever comes over the plate. Well, first pitch swinging here for Palacios. Man, it's right in her wheelhouse. And when I say throw in, I mean it's throwing in with intention, knowing that you have to hit a good spot. You just see the look on Megan Golden's face, just straight defeated in that moment. But yet again, it's playing into Palacios and how hot she has been against this Grand Canyon team. That's now eight ribbies that she has against Grand Canyon. She is living her best life in this <laughs> <Yeah>. tournament. <laughs> her third home run in three games. All of them have come against Grand Canyon. And remember what happened last year. This UCLA team came out in regionals. They were hosting. The very first game, this Grand Canyon team upset them. And the Bruins have not forgotten that. They laid it on, scoring nine runs, shutting out the Lopes on Friday. And here they are on regional final Sunday with a 3 nothing lead. And I think a different type of energy, no doubt, starting off this regional. You could tell that UCLA was on a mission with what happened last year. It's very uncharacteristic for this program and, and for college softball. This is a team that you see in a regional, a super regional, as well as the Women's College World Series a lot. So when that happened last year, it took the softball world by storm. And a, a part of me, honestly, as the year began for UCLA, didn't know if they'd be a team that would potentially even be able to host. And I mean, the road that they've been able to take to get to this point, phenomenal story. That Bruin magic is a real thing and they have been on board. Here's Megan Grant back towards Megan Golden. And that's the first out. Well, last year, UCLA going 0-2 in their regional. That ended a streak of seven consecutive Women's College World Series appearances. That's such an impressive streak. Keep in mind, UCLA has been to the Women's College World Series more than any other program 31 times. But that happens last year. Then you start this year's season at 3-4. And there were a lot of questions early on, and Kelly Inouye Perez has been open about it, that we are not the team that we were when we started the season. Caitlin Dunkel running back to retire Jordan Woolery. Well, I, I mean, it, it doesn't go without saying it, it's not how you start, it's how you finish that really is. And this was a team that came off kind of a heartbreak, and you looked at last year, and to me, that was a team that could go out and try to win the Women's College World Series with a Megan Fremo and a Brooke Yanez. And, and I think they kind of felt the fact that Taylor Tinsley didn't get a lot of experience last year with only 50 innings on the year, and they needed her to be able to be that kind of vet presence with the freshman Caitlin Terry this year. So that was really the biggest thing that I had circled. It wasn't that this 
wasn't a scary offense, but you know it always starts with pitching. If you are not rocked and, and ready to go with that piece, it's tough to make a pretty far postseason push. There's Savannah Pola who walked it off for the Bruins in a nail biter of a game yesterday against Virginia Tech. UCLA had to come from behind to stay in the winner's portion of the bracket. They trailed by four. Caitlin Terry was the one that got the start on Friday night against the Lopes and shut them out in her very first NCAA tournament game of her career. If you're just tuning into this one, a three-run homer by Charlize Palacios put the UCLA Bruins on the board. They took a 3-0 lead after five pitches were thrown in this game. towards left, Kayla Rogers scoops it up. When you're heading into a Supers, you don't want your last memory being an outing where it just it leaves a sour taste in your mouth. So getting the ball with a three-run lead. Ashley Treeweiler, the conference player of the year, takes the first pitch over to Malaulu at third. And the one thing about Taylor Tinsley that really stands out, she just is so good at that off speed. She is coming from the right side, so opposite of the lefty Caitlin Terry, but comes in a tax hitter 68% of the time, she's coming at you with that first pitch strike. And I think that's why you were able to see Virginia Tech come out so hot in game one of this regional on Saturday because they were attacking that first pitch. They were almost pouring it on like, you saw UCLA just do to Grand Canyon right out of the gate. Here's Caitlin Dunkel, the shortstop. Now we know how important a pitching staff is, especially for the postseason. Taylor Tensley is one for UCLA that has been limited. She missed about seven games. They held her out, came back in the Pac-12 tournament. It's been her and Caitlin Terry have been the one-two punch, both aces for UCLA, but they've, they've got to have Tensley moving forward. There's no way to make it through the postseason without having two solid pitchers. And obviously a lot of game that needs to be played. Grand Canyon can easily get back in this ball game with the pop that they have in their bat. But if you're looking hypothetically into the future with only having one arm, really, that's why I think it was important to bring Taylor Tinsley in. But I mean, the numbers don't lie here. The rest of the staff, it has been these two. And I think the most important thing has been that they've really had each other's backs when they needed it. Caitlin Terry, that lefty, I mean, she was out for November, December, January. And Taylor Tinsley really carried the load at the beginning of preseason. And all of a sudden, Taylor Tinsley went down a little while ago and took some time off. And Caitlin Terry has been clutch through every single game of that Arizona State Pac-12 series that they, they had. And... She's really had to step up and kind of learn what that grind is like. Yeah, at one point, Caitlin Terry had thrown 31 straight innings. 2-2 yeah. two, two to Dunkel. We take a look at the starting lineup for the Grand Canyon Lopes, presented by Capital One. They've used four different lineups over four games here at the NCAA tournament, but Treeweiler is the one that led off, of course, and took that first pitch over to third. And that will be a walk issued to Dunkel. And that's a great at bat by Caitlin Dunkel. Works eight pitches. And when we got the opportunity to talk to head coach Shannon Hayes prior to this game kicking off, he said at times our, our team tends to struggle a little bit with those left handed pitchers. And Caitlin Terry he said it would be ideal if Taylor Tinsley got the start. We tend to have a little bit more success against those power right handed pitchers. And that's what you're seeing here. With Tinsley getting the ball. I see Shannon Hayes in his third season with Grand Canyon. They have won three straight WAC tournament titles. First team to do that. And right now in the infield, it was Taylor Tinsley and Charlize Palacios kind of digging at the pitcher's lane. 
And sometimes with that plant foot, so those right-handed pitchers, your left foot is going to be one that touches down. And if you don't feel like you have a good stable surface or if something's off, the weight and the momentum through the front side of your body is so key to create the power through the back half of your pitch. So you want to make sure you have a good landing place. And they always say that to whether it's pitchers on my daughter's team or little pitchers that are listening. You always want to make sure the ball is great and you want to make sure that you have a good landing spot. And if it's not, make it great for yourself. Kristen Fifield with the swing and the miss against Taylor Tinsley. Fifield, a couple of hits, a home run this weekend. Last seven games hitting 400. Strike two. First strikeout of the afternoon for Taylor Tensley. She does a good job locating rise ball on the outside part of the plate, the big swing and miss. So now Ramsey Lopez with two down and a runner on. UCLA did not walk any batters on Friday night against Grand Canyon. In fact, they only allowed three base runners in that 9-0 run rule win through five innings. And for these lopes, I think it's going to be key for them to remember what that momentum felt like in yesterday's games. San Diego State and then being able to take down Virginia Tech. They seem like a team that was so at ease, having so much fun. And it's a tough task. When you're playing UCLA and they're swinging a hot bat and you're playing at their house with their home crowd, it, it can bring a different type of feel coming into an elimination game. There's no doubt about that. But I think being able to... Look at yesterday, it was pretty cool to just see how relaxed they really were. Yeah, they looked like the team, the Grand Canyon team we've been used to seeing this season that's ninth in the nation in average. You see, you see just two hits against UCLA, 19 total in two games on Saturday. That's gonna be a strikeout looking back. Doing your job. And she challenged this team to come in with an edge today. Let's not get over hyped about the fact that we just run ruled this Grand Canyon team two days ago. We yeah. need to still have an edge. And I, she also mentioned how shocking it was for Virginia Tech to go down last night. And that's how easy something like that can happen. So it's being fully aware that every single game, you need to be able to go out with that intention to absolutely let it rip and show them who's boss. And that to me is, what you saw game one for UCLA against this Grand Canyon team, and then you saw them come out in the top of the first doing the same thing. And I think, especially when you come off of a 2023 regional the, with such a heartbreak, it has to be all gas, no breaks on a day like today, because those are the little moments through sport, like that field, they'll never forget what that moment in time felt like. Yeah, it's a new year, but you don't want that to be repeated. Seneca Kuro leading off here at 7, 8, and 9 due up. It was a three-run home run by Charlize Palacios that put UCLA on the board, her third home run of the weekend. Foul ball. And this is a tough lineup to deal with for any opponent if you're facing UCLA. They've gotten better and better and that's helped them in some of these comeback victories. But right now, over UCLA's last 10 games, they have nine different players batting 300 or better. Talk about peaking at the right time. Yeah, I was just going to say that. It's all about that 
wanting to get to the top of the mountain, but understanding and respecting that it's an uphill climb to get where you want to go and where they want to go is Oklahoma City. So you kind of break down a season into three separate seasons. You have the preseason, then you have Pac-12 conference play and your conference tournaments, and then you you get into the postseason. It's a clean slate. It's different. But you're, you're seeing, I mean, Megan Golden, she's working. Also seeing a good scrappy AB. Savannah Pola actually got the game winner against Virginia Tech yesterday, working eight pitches in this at bat. And it's almost that pickle jar mentality, seeing a lot of pitches and being able to do that kind of at times ignites this different passion. Sorry, excuse me, Seneca Kuro battling eight pitches, but that's what it's all about. Just igniting this different confidence into your offense by making a pitcher work. And a walk, the first walk issued today by Megan Golden. Well, we are punching tickets today to Super Regionals. We already have a handful of teams that punch that ticket. Moving on to Supers, including the number one seed this year, Texas. Now, Georgia is the regional that would match up with this regional in Supers. So the winner of this regional would go on to face the Georgia Bulldogs here if it would be UCLA they would get to host. Tessa Malau-Ulu. Yesterday was so much fun because I felt like scores were coming in, surprising us with some teams like the Omaha team. We're one of the only sites with Missouri to have the number four seed make it to Sunday. Yes. I think that was that's the only two. Kind of a cool little nugget and right out of the gate. You would not have assumed that with Grand Canyon and getting run ruled on Friday night against UCLA. And the same thing with Omaha. I mean beating Missouri, beating Washington, getting the job done, making it where they had to get beat twice today. Missouri actually ended up beating them earlier in game one. So they're in that final backs up against the wall, game seven. Up the middle goes Malau Ulu. And they will get the lead runner. Seneca Kuro is out as Malau Ulu reaches on the fielder's choice. And it's good that Megan Golden lets this go just with where the defenders are up the middle, a little Kirk to Dunkel. One away for the center fielder, Janelle Mayonio. trying to drop the bunt down. And Mayonio, so good in that nine spot, just can turn the lineup over. I mean, hitting a cool 471 in her last 10 games. I think the importance of having someone like her set the tone for Maya Brady. And Janelle Mayonio, a player that started her career, three seasons at Arizona, was actually the Pac-12 batting champion in 2021 when she hit 439. She was also the freshman of the year in the conference during that season. Now in her second year with UCLA, a heck of a center fielder. Golden ahead, 0-2. Looking for shallow room in. What are we gonna do tomorrow when there's no softball on TV? <laughs> Well, you're going to travel home. You're going to. And gonna, probably watch some more softball that gonna, happened today that we missed. You're going to rest up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it will be back. Don't know where yet. First couple of supers will start Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Thursday, Friday, and we'll have some Friday, Saturday. Top of the order, Maya Brady. She only saw one pitch, and she saw it, saw it go into her body. She was hit by a pitch to start the game. And that off-speed pitch was a pitch that head coach Shannon Hayes mentioned, the, the importance of that piece, because it was picked yesterday against Virginia Tech. I mean, they had it. They have a lot of male fast-pitch guys on Virginia Tech staff, and you could constantly hear them calling it from the dugout, but wanted her to keep throwing it. And to me, someone, when I think about Megan Golden, she, she's not going to blow you away with the velocity. Not your typical 68, 70 mile an hour hurler. She's someone that really changes speeds well, but really can cruise at 60 miles an hour and kind of change planes, can go upstairs when she needs to with a little off-speed rise. Maya Brady at the wall, bobbled a bit by Kayla Rogers, but she holds on to it for out number three. The time of the season is about certain players being able to step up, be clutch, and the biggest goal for them, and you heard them talk about it a lot, they wanted to win 50 games, and they did. And I think that too is something to be so proud of. It's hard to do. Yeah, they're one of three teams this season with 50 or more wins. The other two, BU and Oklahoma. Yeah, it's a pretty good club to be up there with. Yeah, it is a single season record for Grand Canyon. They're making their third straight NCAA appearance, and all of those have been here in the Los Angeles Regional. Shannon Hayes has gotten them to this point. Actually, really interesting background was the men's basketball coach at Abilene Christian. Spent two seasons as an assistant at Texas Tech in Houston. On the basketball side was the Abilene Christian athletic director and then switched to softball in 2006. This is Micaiah Gomez leading off five, six, and seven due up for Shannon Hayes and his Grand Canyon Lopes. Great spot. Full count here. Taylor Tensley struck out the last two batters that she faced in the first inning. Getting the start for the second day in a row. Mayonio wants it in center, one away. And I can't express the importance of a start like this for Taylor Tinsley. Especially looking back at the last 10 games. I mean, Caitlin Terry, 54.2 innings pitch. Taylor Tinsley, 6.1. That's, that's a big difference. And I, I know we said it a, a, an inning or two ago about respecting the fact that it's very tough to ride out the postseason and get where you want to go with one arm. But at times, that's kind of the vibe that UCLA has given me over the last little bit. So I think being able to build up that confidence, taking time off is challenging, especially in the middle of a season. And you could tell with how Taylor Tinsley started that game Friday, she definitely was not herself a little bit off. So being able to kind of get your feet under you a little bit in the postseason. This will be Seneca Kuro's call. And I mean, Kelly Inouye Perez is working so closely with these two pitchers. She is calling pitches. She took over doing that after they started three and four because she wanted Charlize Palacios, the catcher, to focus on these two young pitchers. But Coach Inouye Perez so in tune to what each one needs when it comes to Tensley and Terry. And she told us, look, Taylor Tensley was not happy to come out of the game yesterday. She wanted to be in there and battle. That's the kind of mentality you want in the circle, right? Yeah. It I fully can respect that you want the ball and you want to stay in there, but you have to understand too, you needed to, to get relieved because you didn't want any lead to get too big, especially going up against Virginia Tech. So it comes down to game management in that moment. But both of these athletes are wicked competitive. And that to me is what makes them stand out. You come into this Bruin team, you know you're looking left and right uh, to your teammates and it's a group of let's go type athletes. Strike two fired in to Savannah Kirk, the conference freshman of the year in the WAC. High 
High hopper towards Kuro. Three up, three down. Grand Canyon still no runs. But to be able to go into Raging Cajun territory with that fan base, right. to be able to do that, wow, they to me are now seasoned to be able to go into a, a super regional and maybe do some damage. We've got a new pitcher in the circle, Haley Hudson, who is the WAC Pitcher of the Year. She steps in. Now, she's been a little banged up, so hasn't been 100% over the last few weeks for Grand Canyon. Well, Haley Hudson, I, I think it's good that she's getting this opportunity. She is that senior. She'll get that chase on that change between pitches up out of the zone. Has added a little bit of velo in the off season. I think really kind of started to learn that lower half and the power and how that can really help her a little bit. It's not easy to do, to gain four miles an hour on your pitches, but maybe some uncharacteristic outings for her. Jadalyn Alchin, a moonshot over the hitting facility. It's the second home run of the afternoon for the Bruins. The fifth long ball of the season for Alchin. Well, and it was right on cue with me saying she's had some uncharacteristic outings. There's just been some times there where she's given up that big hit, that long ball, and you see another one by Jalen Alchin, the two hitter, just on point. Up over the UCLA sign and right center. Now passing the big bat to Charlize Palacios, another insurance run here for UCLA. Good luck finding that softball. Yeah. Charlize Palacios hit a three-run home run in the first inning. So she's up to 18 home runs to lead the Bruins on the season. Talking to Kelly Inouye Perez about Palacios, coach told us she makes me want to play again. She's that kind of player. She's just so good at her position, so good with her bat. A catcher that knows what her pitchers need. Wow, and she's going to strike out there. A rare sight as Haley Hudson sits her down. But a good response for Hudson after giving up the solo shot. Yeah, I always say that about a pitcher. You give up a big time home run, solo shot, importance of how you respond, just painting corners outside part of the plate. Next up, Megan Grant. Grant, two hits yesterday against Virginia Tech. She was 0 for 5 before that game. Senior Haley Hudson worked a ton with pitching coach Mary Beth Gorsuch, alumni, LSU. She's been able to really come in here, connect with these pitchers. I think almost instill this different type of confidence in them and this belief that they can go out there and she's been able to really help. I mean, her goal, Coach Shannon Hay said, she wanted below two team ERA. Oh, he's like, yeah, that's, that's, a that's, that's a lot when you have five Ladies on staff with 30 plus innings pitched on the year. Free pass for Megan Grant. There's Mary Beth Gorsuch. LSU standout. Not just worked with the mechanical stuff, but also the mental side with the pitching staff. So now with a runner on, Jordan Woolery will step in against Hudson. I'm not sure if he was talking strike zone with Leah Dami behind the plate. Not anything really stands out to me, but. McKenzie Nolan trying to turn two, no chance. 
but they do get Megan Grant going to second. Just a nice little 5-4. Not getting eaten up by the hop. I think the importance here for Grand Canyon too, those lead outs are important. Don't want to let any more runs up on the board if you can. They gave up a solo home run to start this inning from Jadalyn Alchin, making it a 4 nothing game. And now here's Savannah Pola, who had the walk-off hit, using that hard dirt in this infield to just hop it over the third baseman's head to beat Virginia Tech yesterday. She is two for five coming into the t this game for the tournament. It's going to be a, a day for Grand Canyon where all hands on deck as far as pitching staff goes. They've been a team that's used a ton of arms all year long. Coach Shannon Hayes mentions pitching coach Gorsuch and just her importance of being able to get all of these pitchers ready. She's big on making the changes when need be, has that instinct to know when to kind of pull the trigger on things. Pola, it's a fair ball. Rolling to the corner. Sliding in. Jordan Woolery. And a smile on the face of Savannah Pola after that RBI. And just clutch. Taking this ball to left field, this is a really good piece of hitting. This is not a bad spot missed by Haley Hudson. They try to get the relay going, but Woolery scores all the way from first base. Picks up the ball, picks up Coach Kirk Walker. She rounds third and then turns on the wheels. Another run here for UCLA. RBI double from Savannah Pola. When at times you're seeing Haley Hudson continue to fall behind a little bit of these hitters and and you know the success rate when you have to bring a ball over the plate against hitters and hitters counts, it, the struggle is real. So I, I think at times that has maybe been something that's plagued her a little bit in this regional, just uncharacteristic starts so far for Haley Hudson when she's come out. I mean, the pressure on this game. UCLA needs one win to advance to its 14th Super Regional. Grand Canyon has to win two today in order to go to what would be its very first Super. This is the first time that they've ever played in a regional final. Oh, Kuro had to duck out of the way. That was coming towards her head. Yeah, it's definitely at this moment scary.
Second free pass issued in this inning by Haley Hudson. Well, I have to have a short leash if I'm Grand Canyon right now. One big bop puts this game in a run rule situation. If you're able to get to the fifth inning, it's kind of remembering those little things, right? And it's a Grand Canyon team that needs to get to game two, to try to keep their season going. So needing to be smart as far as the pitching department. Uh, Tessa Malau-Ulu will step up with two on. She does not have a home run this season. Grand Canyon does have some action in the bullpen. Megan Schumacher, the transfer from Missouri, warming up over there now. On the move, Kayla Rogers, and that is out number eight, nine, and one up against Taylor Tensley. Tenley Lucas fouls off that pitch. What have you thought about Taylor Tensley so far? So, I mean, so far, so good. She's she's done a pretty good job. She's gotten some fly outs. I like her, her couple strikeouts. She's gone to her off speed. I think these are all things that kind of fill your mental piggy bank up, right? And she's someone that needs to see herself having success throwing since she has taken a little bit of time off. But I think on the flip side here for Grand Canyon, especially when they, they go that second time through the lineup, adjustments being made sooner rather than later, knowing that they have no runs up there on the board. They need to try to play catch up here quickly, especially with UCLA's momentum that they're having offensively. So be interested to see with Treeweiler coming back up here in a little bit, how they adjust. Tindler Lucas, the freshman catcher. Lifting it to center. Tenley Lucas over the fence for the fourth time this year. And the Lopes are on the board. And a baby Tinley Lucas. Pitch on the inner half, just takes it deep, left center. I think if I'm seeing anything today at times, Courtney, with Taylor Tinsley, maybe just a couple too close, too sweet. Oh, diving grab from Alchin and left. It's one thing we've heard Coach Kelly Inoue Perez say a ton is how locked in her outfield is, how good Jaden Alchin is out there. How good Janelle Mayonio and the layout all day. Those are the important things I think that are so key, especially after your pitcher gives up that solo shot to be able to step up on defense and stop that momentum, have her back. That was, that was big. Top of the order here with Ashley Treeweiler. The conference player of the year, first in the nation in hits this year with 94. Transferred in from Santa Clara. By the way, Tenley Lucas with that solo home run, it's her first RBI in her last 17 games. You know, sometimes in postseason you'll get people that step up and get the party started, get the rally going here for Grand Canyon. Still plenty of time to work with. But I think for me, it's it's going to come down to the location piece for Taylor Tinsley. Her changeup at times is that bread and butter pitch. But I think location of her harder stuff is going to be really important. But at times, that's taking a little bit of time off and trying to get back. And, and I say playing catch up because it's different throwing bullpens and getting prepared than it is being out there on the dirt playing a, an opponent. It's a different adrenaline rush. This one hit back at Tinsley. 
Two down. And Taylor Tinsley was a member of the all Pac-12 first team this year, all freshman team last year, but didn't see her in the tournament last year. They only had two games. So these innings yesterday and today are her first experience of the NCAA postseason. Caitlin Dunkel walked on an eight pitch at bat in the first inning against Tensley. Kind of had a cool moment yesterday for Dunkel. Both her parents played sports at San Diego State and uh, she was able to boot their alma mater out of the tournament. <laughs> and then we had the old school pictures of her parents back in the day in college. And her mom played softball for San Diego State. Her dad played baseball and football. So I'm wondering if there was a day where my daughters, they're 10 and seven, if they play in college, would my photos look old school? Like, would I? Yes. Because those ones look like, you know, the Lisa, the styrofoam visor was such a vibe in the best way. <laughs> Strikeout number three today for Taylor Tensley. We will talk to Grandian head coach Shannon Hayes. And coach, what was your message to the team coming in to face UCLA a second time in three days? Well, go let it all hang out and have fun and attack. And and they attacked early and we're trying to fight back and hopefully we can keep it close here and and uh, have some good at bats and and figure things out a little bit. But against a good team like UCLA, there's not much room for mistakes. Coach, first off, congratulations on 50 wins, one of three teams in the country to do it. But adjustments in the circle that you need to try to get your pitchers to make here quick to keep this a tighter ball game. Yeah, it's it's some of it's hard to tell, you know, watching from the side where our location is, but obviously working ahead and staying away from two and zero oh and three three and one counts and and full counts. I mean, that's death against a team like this. So we've got to stay ahead in the count, and then we got to throw meaningful pitches to try to get outs and get some weak contact. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Haley Hudson is in the circle right now for the Lope. She came in in relief of Megan Golden in the third inning and. You see her line, she's a senior, the conference pitcher of the year. UCLA was able to get two runs off of her last inning. I feel like she hasn't really settled in how she typically has been as the season has gone on for Grand Canyon. She's been such a staple for them in the circle and she's gone up against some, some tough teams, right? When you're facing this offense that is swinging it the way they are for UCLA, it makes it at times a tough task for a pitcher to be able to go in and be really sharp. I mean, UCLA is hitting 449 <laughs> in the tournament. Oh, and also, too, I mean, mad respect, because at times as a pitcher, even if you throw a good spot, hitting these days, they can find a, a way to put barrel on it and do something with it. So you have to be able to tip your cap at times where, where credit's due. And I agree with Coach Hayes, falling behind in counts is never healthy against a lineup like UCLA. and. That's at times what we've seen Haley Hudson do a little bit, just fall behind and that can hurt you. Well, she's ahead right now, two balls and a strike. Or behind right now, two balls and a strike to Janelle Maonio. Maonio had a dive out of the way of that one. We've seen a little bit of effectively wild pitches today. We saw Megan Golden throw a couple to some UCLA hitters, just miss. Hard, high slap for Maonio, beats it out. And all weekend, this ground has been rock solid. You can really get a good bounce off of it. And the leadoff for UCLA has continued to get on every single inning. But more importantly, this to me is home field advantage. You know your field, you use the dirt. Maonio, no doubt about it. A lot of speed up the line. Yet again, another leadoff for UCLA. And I think they're going to make her come back and do this again. It's going to be a foul ball, actually. Wow, I, I missed right. that. Yeah.
I'm about as confused as you are here. Yeah. Another look at it. Oh, a double oh, okay. tip off that bat. Yeah, yeah you the can see it better off. from the side too. Yeah, our apologies on that. It's tough to get that good look. It's a raceable pen coming in clutch. Yes, it is. Game changer. Mayonio eighth pitch working in this at bat here. These are key moments here for Haley Hudson. Important to get nine hitter out. No one top is lingering. Mayonio is going to get on anyway, just in a little bit of a different way. Drops this one to the grass. And now the leadoff has reached in every inning for UCLA. <laughs> the stat is alive. And this time she doesn't use the dirt. She finds a little green out there and gets on base, passes the bat to Maya Brady in that leadoff spot. This is the second time today that Maya Brady has been hit by a pitch. Megan Golden hit her to start the game, and now Haley Hudson puts her on with the hit by a pitch. But now it comes to home run row in the part of UCLA's lineup. Jadalyn Alchin with a solo shot to lead off the third inning. She has two on and nobody out. Pac-12 second team selection after four seasons playing at Washington, now a Bruin. Olchin has another hit. Stop sign thrown up for Mayonio at third and the bases are loaded for guess who? Try to get a double play potentially. Palacios, five home runs in the postseason, if you also include the Pac-12 tournament last weekend. Oh, they're saying foul ball, foul ball. Well, at first, Lee Adami said fair. You saw her put her hand out, and that's why you had Lucas behind the plate. I thought she immediately pointed out with her left hand that it was a foul ball. No, I, I thought she put her hand out like, hey, fair. I could be completely wrong, but that's why I thought Lucas touched the plate and went straight to first. Fair. Well, she, no, she, she, she did fair first, and then she went foul. She's fooling us all. 0-2 to Palacios. And at times where you've seen pitchers find success against someone like Palacios, it's nibbling that outside part of the plate. And at a 1-2 count, I'm going three balls off the plate, low. That one hops up away from Tenley Lucas. The run scores. Mayonio comes home. Scores on the wild pitch. On well, the moment here is big and pitchers for Grand Canyon right now struggling a little bit with that command piece. And now the count runs full. Alchin and Brady in scoring position. Goes into the dirt and gets it. Nolan going to first, and that's the first out, but in comes Maya Brady for another run.
And I thought for a second maybe Nolan was going to go home, knowing Maya Brady had that ground ball go. She looked, but the quick little turn for Lucas, telling her to go one. Another run here for UCLA. Just one out for Megan Grant with a runner on third. It's the second time that Megan Grant has walked. This is where you have to talk run rule a little bit here, Courtney, with one down and Grand Canyon on having only six outs left. UCLA needs two more runs up on the board. Well, Taylor Stevens is gonna come in to pinch run at first base. Yeah, the run rule up eight after five innings, so UCLA needs two more runs in order to get in that territory. Still in the fourth, of course. Runners on the corners, one away for Jordan Woolery. Uh, Megan Schumacher ducked at the last minute to get out of the way of that throwdown by Tenley Lucas trying to check Stevens going to second. Really, is, it's just coming down to the strike piece and continuously falling behind and finding yourself in a pickle as a pitcher because you got to bring something a little bit more over the plate. Hopper to Nolan. And again, that allows another run to score as she makes the toss over to first. I'm not sure why we're not seeing any attempt by Nolan to even try to go home. That was a nice, easy ground ball. Has a good arm at third. Maybe it's just me. I know she's playing even with the bag, but it's just, she's got a ton of time. Her throw is, is a lot faster than the speed up the line. So now UCLA just needs one more run to put them in run rule territory. Of course, we need to get to the fifth inning. But this is Savannah Pola, had an RBI double in the third. Stevens is at second. Courts Dunkel at short, and that is out number three. With the Bruins, plate three more runs in the fourth. They're up eight to one here in our Walker for UCLA. And 
Coach, the approach at your plate, at the plate you're seeing from your team this week, and how would you describe it? Yeah, they've been really uh, great at adapting, right? We've been focused on clutching up and, and kind of staying um, uh, in a position to be able to cover that off speed. We faced a lot of different pitchers, different movement, and the off speed. So you want to cover the in, the out, and the off speed. You've got to be prepared to uh, to clutch up and not overswing. Coach, Caitlin Terry has got the bulk of the innings these last 10 games. Talk about the importance of Taylor Tinsley getting some work under her belt here today. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's just um, getting Taylor some more opportunity and more reps is great. Um, it's been really good, obviously, for Caitlin Terry to, to get a lot of throwing in. But, um, you know, Taylor's getting some good innings in right now, and that's an important thing. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. You bet. So UCLA up 8-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth inning after scoring three more runs. And so the hole just became bigger for Grand Canyon, who has to beat the Bruins not once, but twice today. Well, and I asked that about Taylor Tinsley because she's only given up the one hit up on the board against a really tough offense for Grand Canyon. So yes. these are all the little things that you need to be able to use, put in your mental piggy bank if they're able to get out of this regional, which, I mean, based on the score, it's, it's looking pretty good. Grand Canyon has some time left, but as a pitcher, when you haven't maybe thrown the amount of innings that you're used to throwing and took that time off, to be able to build yourself up in the postseason can be a tough task. So a day like today, I think, is super important for her to just feel good about herself and use that moving forward if they are able to get through and go to a super because Caitlin Terry cannot do it by herself. I, the days of that happening are long gone. And that's a hit batter that will put Kristen Fifield on. Well, the Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins begins Thursday, May 30th at 12 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2024 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. So the leadoff is on for Grand Canyon and brings up Ramsey Lopez. Well, then if you're wondering, which I know you are, I am. Missouri walked it off Had to win oh, two no today. Way. Yeah. Wow. They'll be playing Duke. Talk about a gutsy performance by both those teams have to play two games today. I mean, Omaha, are you kidding me? So good. Yeah, so Did good. You? It's actually at Missouri Regional and our regional were the only two that were able to get those four seeds to be able to go and compete for and compete in a regional final today. The Grand Canyon was able to do that here by eliminating San Diego State and then Virginia Tech yesterday. That win over Virginia Tech, their 50th win of the season. Foul ball. Just makes, I mean, like Super Regionals are going to be so fun. There's dangerous teams. And you can't count anybody out. Well, uh, I'm just going to go out and say it. Stanford playing Cal State Fullerton and Nyjah Kennedy not getting the ball game one today. And looking at the score the last time that I checked, it was 8-1 to one for Cal State Fullerton, who is a very tough team, no doubt. But man, when I have someone like Nyjah Kennedy, the last thing I want to do <laughs> is have to play two on a Sunday simply because of the momentum. And we saw that with Grand Canyon yesterday and the importance when they beat San Diego State and them carrying that over to play Virginia Tech, they, they carried that piece. So it also puts a whole lot more pressure on Nyjah Kennedy, who's just been sitting this whole game watching. And those are the pieces of the game at times where I'm like, ah, I understand you need two pitchers, but you also need to get to Super Regionals first, and I don't want to mess around on a Sunday. A very interesting, the strategy. Ramsey Lopez struck out, and here's Makaya Gomez. So Taylor Tinsley with four strikeouts on the afternoon.
But this to me feels like the most open field yet with these teams punching tickets to the Super Regionals and just some of these upsets. Louisiana getting upset today, hosting yeah. a regional. The last time that the Washington Huskies did not make it to a regional final. I know you know the answer. I do know the answer, but Nin I'll let you say it. 19 1994, <laughs> losing. Like there's just a lot more parity ac across the board. ESPN app, you can see every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series, only on the ESPN networks. A couple of free passes issued here, a hit by a pitch and then a walk. Brings up Kayla Rogers and the Lopes, trying to bring these runs home to keep UCLA from being close to that run roll. It's up eight runs after five innings. Strikeouts now for Tinsley. And that has to feel good if you're Taylor Tinsley. He's racking up some strikeouts. Like Palacios, always keeping the D. Going out there, trying to get a little double up at first, but. Here's Savannah Kirk now with two down. Right back at Tensley and it bounces off her glove. That's gonna load him up for the Lopes. He'll rule that a single for Kirk. So now Tenley Lucas that led off the third inning with a solo home run. Up with the bases loaded. She hits 333 with the bases loaded. This kind of feels like big time moment obviously here for Grand Canyon in this game. Especially with who they have up. Lucas had that solo shot, a lot of pop. Saw some excitement throughout the dugout when she was able to go yard. And this was back in the third inning and Tenley Lucas blasting her fourth home run of the season. If you're Grand Canyon, this is when you want to find a way, have that clutch hitting when it matters, two outs, bases loaded. They're looking at Charlize Palacios here. She takes a beating back there. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but catching is not a, uh, it's not an easy position. No, it was my first choice. No, I never thought about it. They are just <laughs> constantly getting beat up back there. Like that's gonna be a bruise on her leg. Like it. There's a reason you are all geared up. What do you call it? Terminator gear? Yeah, Terminator gear. You gotta have it back there. <laughs> wow. Malau Ulu, I mean, in the blink of an eye, caught that soft. And it's interesting because we're talking with Coach Kelly Inouye Perez prior to this game. I mean, she said, like, the game is showing us these little things and these little signs and things are continuing to happen. And that, to me, is, like, an example of that, right? Like, someone being able to step up, big-time moment. And it doesn't always have to be stuff that's directly on the field, but this is a team that has at times faced a lot of adversity. Seneca Kuro, Dunkel is all over it. And they've learned from that adversity. Grown together and, and figured things out. Went from three and four to start the year to winning the regular season and the Pac-12 tournament titles. 
And I think to me, the leadership is the piece that stands out the most when you think of a player like Maya Brady and how much she's just been able to step up for this program. And Coach Inouye Perez said it herself. She could have very well just said, hey, I've done a lot in my career. I I'm good. I don't need to lead. She's always kind of been that little sister, as she mentioned it in a press conference a couple days ago, because she's been able to ride. She set the coattails of players like Rachel Garcia and Megan Fremo and Aaliyah Jordan and this year has tested her in the sense of it's harder to be a leader when you're down and you're not winning those games. You, you have to see yourself in a different light. Malau Ulu just passed a diving Savannah Kirk. And so. One down for Janelle Mayonio. And there goes Malau Ulu. There's nobody there to catch the throw. She's going to get to third as well. The throw came into second base and nobody was there. And Janelle Mayonio is just so quick, but there's no cover. See, she goes for the bunt and you see Kirk start making her way to first base, but these are the little things are important in the moment. So Malaulu is going to get a stolen base and then advancing to third on the error by the catcher. We're going to change up batters here with the count being 1 and 0. Oh. Ramsey Suarez will step in and man, it's a little scary when you see her coming out of the dugout because she leads this team as a pinch hitter with eight pinch hits. Excuse me, nine now. And more importantly, at Easton Stadium at home this year, five for five as a pinch hitter. Dang. Yeah, exactly. Dang. <laughs> There's a different type of competitor and confidence that needs to be there when you are a pinch hitter because you're doing one of the hardest things in the game at times where you fail actually quite a bit and the numbers don't lie. I, a cool five for five at home, but have to be so locked in as the game's going on, trying to stay present. Hard hit ball to Dunkel, thinking about it, checks the runner at third. And Malau Ulu is going to hold at third as Suarez is retired for the first time as a pinch hitter at home. <laughs> Top of the order for the third time. Maya Brady has been hit by a pitch twice to reach. She is one hit, by the way, from top 10 career at UCLA. But that runner at third representing the run that would put UCLA up by eight meaning the Lopes would have three outs to work with in the bottom of this inning. Gets away from Lucas, holding is Malaulu. I like the exchange of Coach Kirk Walker and Malaulu. Maya Brady, the back-to-back Pac-12 Player of the Year winners. They've had a few of them here at UCLA. High hop. Dunkel can't hold on. Run is across, and UCLA is up by eight. That hit puts Maya Brady into the top ten career list. And she's swinging early in the count, takes it right back up the middle. Defenders are even pinched up the middle, but still finds a way to be that ribby machine that she is. Puts that run rule effect in order if Grand Canyon is not able to score here in the bottom of the fifth. It's her fourth RBI in the tournament this weekend. And we're going to have a pitching change for Grand Canyon. So with a runner on and two outs. All right, here we go. 
New face in the circle is Alina Satcher making her eighth appearance this year. She has only pitched five and a third innings this season for the Lopes. And she'll start with Jalen Alchin after Maya Brady just had an RBI single to put UCLA up by eight. And at this point, I mean, being able to bring in the freshman, yeah, maybe not a whole ton of experience. No one there's two down. And she's going to walk the first batter that she faces. So now two on for Charlize Palacios. That really has kind of been the, the biggest difference for me today, Courtney, with Grand Canyon is just the pitching hasn't been sharp. and. That is a tough task when you're going up against this UCLA team. They're swinging it really well, and they seem to be swinging it really well against this Grand Canyon team, too. They almost put the pressure on a team, especially Grand Canyon, right out of the gate, and you can feel that. the first strike that Satcher has tossed in. Facing a batter that's in the MVP for UCLA this weekend in the regional. Three run home run in the first inning for Charlize Palacios. Now had a home run in four of their last five games. And a good opportunity for the freshmen. I mean, you're going up against one of the absolute best. And I think that's where you learn a little bit about yourself and go out there and just let it rip. Two two to Palacios. Back to back walks to load them up for Megan Grant. Lauren Hatch will pinch run for UCLA at first. <laughs> Alina Satcher entered this game two batters ago with two down after a RBI single for Maya Brady put UCLA up by eight, but now she has walked two in a row to load the bases. UCLA has walked 11 times in this regional versus Grand Canyon, and the free pass piece is tough when you're trying to keep an offense like that at bay. And I mean, you don't need to, to say any more. You know that's just not going to cut it.
foul ball off the end of the bat from Megan Grant. And that's going to be a strikeout for Alina Satcher and out number three. So last chance back here and then beat UCLA again later today in order to advance. 9-1-2 and two, due up for the Lopes as their season on the line, a season where they have won 50 games yeah. more than any other season in program history and made it to the regional final for the very first time. And I don't know, I, I just get this vibe for, for Grand Canyon just constantly knocking on the door. I mean, what they were able to do last year with beating UCLA game one and kind of setting the tone for how this regional was going to go down to then doing what they were able to do on Saturday with knocking out a Virginia Tech team. Let, let's be honest, people were going to be under the assumption it was going to be UCLA and Virginia Tech squaring off today. That's what I had assumed. You can never assume because you don't know. you got to win to win. But... This is a team that is continuing to do really big things. This one rolls to Woolery, one down. And so maybe it's that type of experience that you're getting in a day like today is something that's going to potentially help them next year and, and fuel this different type of fire going into the offseason. It'll be a pinch hitter as we go back to the top of the order. Bren Jordan Smythe. Lopes down to their final two outs. When you look at this UCLA team, first of all, what impresses you the most about what you've seen in their three games at regionals so far? Uh, well, they put teams on their heels right away offensively. And it, it, to me, it's a never say die attitude that we've seen them really start to develop as conference play has gone on. And you saw it in that Arizona UCLA last Pac-12 series between those two teams where UCLA came out on top. They had 11 unanswered runs and it brought and lit this different flame under this team. Smythe to Maya Brady. Wow. Body slam Taylor Tensley, but that's all right. <laughs> Two down and they are one out away from Super Regionals. This is just a web jam all the play, all the way, excuse me, Maya Brady. Such a great athlete, I know we know this, but to pick it on the hop and get the throw and WWE or teammate all in one play, yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. The top 10 finalist for National Player of the Year, the back-to-back -back Pac-12 Player of the Year. And now it comes down to Caitlin Brandstrom for the Lopes. I think my, my biggest question mark for UCLA entering Super Regionals and World Series, if that's where they get to, will just be the pitching. They're young. That's it. Strikeout number six for Tensley sends them back to the Super Regionals for the 14th time.
And it's interesting because we're talking with Coach Kelly Inoue Perez prior to this game. I mean, she said, like, the game is showing us these little things and these little signs and things are continuing to happen. And that, to me, is, like, an example of that, right? Like, someone being able to step up, big-time moment. And it doesn't always have to be stuff that's directly on the field, but this is a team that has at times faced a lot of adversity. Seneca Kuro, Dunkel is all over it. And they've learned from that adversity. Grown together and, and figured things out. Went from three and four to start the year to winning the regular season and the Pac-12 tournament titles. And I think to me, the leadership is the piece that stands out the most when you think of a player like Maya Brady and how much she's just been able to step up for this program. And Coach Inouye Perez said it herself. She could have very well just said, hey, I've done a lot in my career. I I'm good. I don't need to lead. She's always kind of been that little sister, as she mentioned it in a press conference a couple days ago, because she's been able to ride. She said the coattails of players like Rachel Garcia and Megan Fremo and Aaliyah Jordan and this year has tested her in the sense of it's harder to be a leader when you're down and you're not winning those games. You, you have to see yourself in a different light. Malau Ulu just passed a diving Savannah Kirk. And so